Good morning. Just once and again, I'd like to invite you to uh, Calvary to the Sunday School lesson. Um, this morning, our lesson will be on seeking, seeking wisdom for the future. Seeking wisdom for the future. And now, um, let us pray. Lord, we thank you for another opportunity to come into the throne room. Lord, we thank you that you have so privileged us that we can come and go and come in Jesus' name and make our petitions known to you. Lord, right now as we ask for your blessing upon this time, we ask that the message come through clear and that you bless those who are all those who are in your hearing. In Jesus' name, and all the people said amen. Seeking the wisdom for the future. Today's lesson will come from 2 Kings, the 22nd chapter. 2 Kings, the 22nd chapter, and 2 Kings, the 22nd, from the 14th to the 20th verse. <clears throat> um, the um, first uh, part of the lesson will, will be a dark future for Judah out of 2 Kings 22, 14 to 16. And the second part of the lesson will be a piece for Josiah, uh, 2 Kings 22, 17 to 20. Because thine heart, the key verse says, was tender, and that thou hast humbled thyself before the Lord, when thou heardest what I spake against this place and against the inhabitants thereof, that they, may, they should become a desolate and a curse, and has rent thy clothes and wept before me, and I have heard thee, saith the Lord. Upon the uh, assassination of Ammon, his son Josiah became king of Judah at the age of eight. At the age of eight, he became a king. So now that he had become a king at the age of eight, he reigned for 31 years before, um, from 640 AD to 609 B BCE. Um, and uh, while Judah was still occupied by Assyria, the Syrians' control was weak enough um, for Judah as a vassal territory to take cautious steps toward their freedom. When he was only 16, he initiated a, a theological revival for Judah. And he attempted to turn the people away from idol worshiping uh, and to turn them toward God meant that he had to uh, turn away from uh, the imposed dependence on Assyria and their um, pagan worship, including false priests and the offer of Bethel. He also, um, he and, and the people made a, co a new covenant with Yahweh, that they would take his book to be the, the land of the law, the law of the land, excuse me. Today's lesson, um, we talk about the uh, temple repairs, and while they were doing the um, temple repairs, they came across this book of the law. And upon finding this sacred text, they sought someone who might shed light on what or how the book of law was redefined the religious life of Judah. Just think about it. There is power in the word of God. Even after um, it had been discarded and forgotten, a high priest comes and discovers this particular book of the law, and it sets off a chain of events that results in the beginning of a new reform. But you got to understand, these reforms did not come without strife. A dark future for Judah and a peace for Josiah. A dark future for Judah. 2 Kings 14 to 16. So Hilkiah the priest and Amkiah, Soabah, and Sephara and Ashiah went to Huddle the prophetess, the wife of Shalal, the son of uh, Tegbah, and the son of Haraz, keeper of the wardrobe. Now she dwelt in Jerusalem in college, and it and they consumed they cons 
They, cons they consume with her. They commune with her, excuse me. And she said unto them, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, Tell the man what you sent me. Thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will bring evil upon this place and upon the inhabitants thereof. Even all the works, words of the book of which the king of Judah hath read. During the temple uh, repair, um, Josiah, the king of Judah, found this book of the law. It had been long uh, discarded by a, an adulterous nation, but it was found by Hilkiah, the priest. Hilkiah was the high priest during Judas during jo Josiah's reign, and he was responsible for nurturing him in the way of the Lord. His tutelage was the kind of thing that a young kid who was trying to be a king, a young king, that's something that he really needed. So after reading the book, Josiah um, feared that the Lord's wrath, and he knew that Judah was in great danger. So he wisely took, sent a delegation to Huldah, the prophetess, to speak with her and require what the Lord should do concerning Judah's faith. Now Josiah, men approached Huldah, God represented Though prophets were, prophets were usually men, this was a female prophetess in this time. And Halar was married to the official uh, who was the keeper of the robes, which meant they were responsible for royal robes and priestly vestments. Um, being both a prophetess and having connections with the court may indicate that the delegation was there to see her, um, was sent to see her as a resident of the second quarter of Jerusalem which mean that the area was enclosed by a broad wall. And when even when Hezekiah was there, that's one of the things that he learned is that he would not have a problem with uh, the city in that time because God gave him more time. And one of the things that the prophet has told Josiah that he would never have to worry about the things that were in the book because they wouldn't happen as long as he was the king of Judah. And um, Josiah was not responsible for any of this destruction, would not be responsible for any of the coming destruction. Nevertheless, she told him that God's judgment was going to come. And that at one time or another, it was going to come, but it just wouldn't come whenever Josiah was the king. That's a dark future for, Ju for Judah, but it also is a peace for Josiah. In 2 Kings, the 22nd chapter, 17th to the 20th verse, Because thou hast forsaken me, and have burned incense to the other God, that thou might provoke me to anger with all the works in thy hand, therefore my wrath shall be kindled against this place, and shall not be quenched. But unto the king of Judah, of Judah I have sent you to inquire of the Lord. Thus say unto him, thus say unto the Lord God of Israel, as touching these words, Thou which thou hast heard, because thy heart was tender, and thou hast humbled thyself before the Lord, when thou heardest and spake against this place, and against the inhabitants thereof, they shall not become desolate, and accursed, and hath rent thy clothes, and wept before me. I also have heard thee, saith the Lord. Wherefore, behold, therefore, I will gather thee unto thy fathers, and thou shalt gather unto the grave in peace, and thine eyes shall not see the evil which I will bring upon this place. And they brought the king word again. So now, the second part of this message was directed to Josiah. And, and it was much more positive in nature. The prophetess returned to Josiah and, and, and told him that, just reassured him that because your heart is tender, because you've humbled yourself before the Lord, you'll not see all the calamity that was going to happen in this particular time. It was all the calamities occurred years after his death. And like Hezekiah, when he turned his face to the wall, and, and he had 17 more years of his life, he was also um, spared the calamity of his time. Josiah realized how wicked the nation of uh, Judah was. And uh, since he did, 
What he did, he went out and did a public reading of the word to uh, his whole, to start a, a spiritual revival for his whole nation. But he did more. He went out and he destroyed uh, the shrines that the heathen had built. He also took and tore down all the uh, adulterous, all the adulterous priests were just removed from, uh, from doing their bidding in, in Judah. And he also went and uh, all the cult prostitutes were driven out and the heathen authors were just desecrated and tore down. And he did, he did everything he could to set a spiritual revival. And see, this is, this is important for us. Through wisdom comes the, the, the whole design of what God is trying to do for a nation. And in, in our day, we find out that knowledge is, in, is, is a, of a great variety. We have knowledge on the internet. We can go and Google stuff and we can find out all kind of information and, and, and different types of uh, uh, things that we can understand and, and, and break down. Almost every type of knowledge is out there for your, for your bid. But see, there's a difference between knowledge and wisdom. Just because the information, all of the information out there in, on the internet or out there in, in, in the digital divide, it's not necessarily good for you to consume. Some of those things you just don't, don't need to know about. But, and wisdom is similar to knowledge too because there's an abundance of wisdom. Uh, but the wisdom that we need is the wisdom of God, not the wisdom of the world. And Josiah knew that if he took the wisdom of God, then he would be okay. And this book of the law was the same type of, uh, of information, same type of wisdom that we need in our day. The wisdom that we need is not the wisdom of the world. It's not the wisdom of people who think that they know more than God does. But just the way we seek after wisdom, we have to seek after the word of God because the word of God is where true wisdom is. And even in this ancient text, Josiah knew that as young as he was, that the, the whole entire idea of being able to have this book of the law and understand it was the way that he should, he should actually enter into life. And, that, and it brings us to, uh, God wants us to have wisdom, but he wants us to have the wisdom of him. He is the one that knows everything. He's omniscient. He knows everything, and he wants you to have that very same type of wisdom. But, you know, it doesn't come easy. It seems like any type of knowledge, any type of wisdom can come through, and, and it's so easy to find. But it seems like the wisdom of God is so much more difficult to achieve. And that's what Josiah pretty, pretty much uh, understood. He knew that wisdom had, had even wisdom has its, its limitations. And, and he had the authority to be able to say, I'll take this book of the law and you do this and you do that and you do this. But he didn't want to do that because he wasn't sure about all the wisdom. He, he knew that the book contained knowledge, but he wanted the wisdom of the knowledge. And what he did was he, he went out and he, he even could have just chosen to disregard the whole book of the law, period. But he went out and he found people who were wise. And he talked with them. And he listened with them. And he did the things of the book of the law based on the wisdom from the people that he had done. He realized that eliminating idol worship, it was really paramount to the future of, of his nation. He knew that driving away these cult prostitutes and, and these, these, the, the platform of all of this, um, these uh, adulterous priests being removed. He knew that that was really important. And see, that's why we see here in this part of the lesson that there was peace for Josiah. Wisdom, knowledge is great, but wisdom of what to do with that knowledge is even greater. And that's what Josiah, Josiah found out. 
He found out that if he did the right thing with wisdom, wisdom knows when to break from the past. Wisdom knows our future. And wisdom will show us our future if we understand that wisdom in the light of God's word. And the only wisdom that we really can have is the, the wisdom that comes from the word of God. Josiah, even though he was a very young king, he started at eight, and I think he only went to, to be 37, 38 before he died. But he had enough wisdom to know that if he did the things in his book of the law, if he did the things of the word, that wisdom would take him to a beautiful future. But he also found out that it would give him peace as long as he was king. And that's how we must understand. We must know beyond the shadow of doubt. When you seek wisdom for the future, so even when it's a dark future, and, and when this pandemic started for us, we thought, oh wow, this is horrible. It's going to be a terrible thing. But we also find out now that just leaning and depending on God, that the pandemic, no matter how strong or how bad it is, is no challenge for the wisdom of God. God already knew before the pandemic even started that we'd be able to withstand it and how he would take us through this. All we had to do was trust him. Same with Josiah. He knew in his own mind, even though he was young, he knew he was wise enough to know that if he trusted God and did the things in the book of this, this law, then everything would work out and wisdom would lead his future. And, and that's exactly what we have to understand too. Our future is based on the word of God and what God has for us. And we can have peace in our hearts and our minds, just like Josiah had in his kingdom, if we just trust God and depend on him to lead us through our future. Amen? Amen. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for a, a, a young king like Josiah, who was, even though he was young, he understood that if he depended and trusted in you and the book of the, this word, the word of the law, the book of the law, then he would have a bright future. And Lord, that's what you're trying to convey to us in our time. No matter what comes or goes, no matter how bad this pandemic or any other pandemic or any other pestilence or problems come, if we look to you for wisdom, you can lead us through any situation, any problems, any, anything that we might come against. Lord, as we look to you to our future, we know that we will have a wise future. We'll have a, a great future if we just trust and believe on you. Because we know that you hold the future in your hands. And in holding the future in your hand, if we come to you and lean and depend on you, then we'll have a bright future, no matter how dark it may seem in the world today. Father, we thank you. We bless you. We honor you. In Jesus' name and all the people said, amen.